Hey traders, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another Weekend Trading Edge video, your weekend look around the markets where I show you some of the top trading ideas that are on my radar for the week ahead. Getting an early start into this week's video, recording this on a Friday. As you can see, the markets are still moving, but I got a busy week ahead and didn't want to miss a video. Now, real quick, just want to remind you guys, next week I'm excited because I get to go live with the DKC strategy. If you guys are new to the video, that's a, a new trading strategy that I started working on technically over the winter, but kind of pieces of it came from failed adventures over the past few years. Now we're going to trade it live for the end of the year and hopefully if it's successful, um, which we're hoping it is, uh, get it coded and turn it into a nice little indicator that our traders can follow. Um, so always cool to start something new and also always cool to revisit something old. And, and that's kind of the, the theme that we've had in the markets this week. We've come off two really highly fundamental weeks with lots of news coming out and lots of movement in the market. This week was more laid back and we saw more consolidative action. Now, again, for many traders, you, you may think that consolidation is boring. It's messy. There's no opportunities. But for me personally, someone who is a counter trend trader and someone who trades advanced pattern formations, these are lovely opportunities because you see a lot of these advanced pattern formations form. And although I had a rough start to the week with a couple losses, then a winner that slipped me and didn't get filled and ended up being break even, ended the week pretty nice with a few winners. So that's exciting. We also have a lot more in the market setting up. So we're going to take a look at them today. Um, some kind of basic, like the run one you see in front of you, this is a basic bullish Gartley pattern on the pound yen, X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D. It's a very deep one, which means that D completion is close to the X legs. You can see the risk reward is uh, pretty nice. And some are going to be pattern formations that you can be used in other situations as well. I'll show you that next. Um, I guess I kind of spilled the beans on this already, so we'll get through it. Pound yen, one hour time frame at market. Who knows if we'll be at market by the time you see this video, but it is a uh, what, almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon, New York time. So I don't expect too much more movement from the markets, although it is the last day of the month. So funny things happen then. But a nice bullish Gartley pattern. Um, the completion point is right near the X leg. I am involved in this one as well. Um, a pretty good risk reward on this pair. So if it is still valid, meaning that X leg is not violated, uh, this can be a nice buying opportunity on the open for you. Next, we're going to head over to the Euro Aussie. I'm going to show you another advanced pattern formation, but this one's going to have a little bit of a twist to it because this is going to be a follow up on some analysis that we did throughout the week. Live room members, this should be familiar to you because we looked at it every day. I think I put a little video on YouTube about this as well, talking about um, Forex volume and whatnot. But we're going to have, and I'll do it the manual version. By the way, this is our Enigma pattern recognition tool that we're using here to identify patterns. Well, this is the cryptographer kind of self-drawing one, but we have Enigma right here. If you click it, it draws on patterns for you. Boom, you can see right there. Um, if you're someone that likes to do a big scan of the market and cut down on your analysis time, I recommend doing this. Bring up all the charts on your portfolio have Enigma set to on so it automatically prints them whenever a pattern is uh, created. And that way you don't have to worry about looking for and missing patterns. Boom, as soon as it's there, it's gonna spot uh, pop out to you. And then of course, you always wanna do your due diligence to make sure that it's a pattern for you, unless you're someone that trades every single setup that Enigma finds. But it's a great piece of software, a great supportive piece of software, because I don't let it do the work for me, but it allows me to eliminate time in my daily analysis. And you guys know me, right? Trading was originally about making as much money as possible. It then became about financial freedom. Um, but over the years, it has shifted to freedom of time, which is the most important thing to me. So it helps with that. But let's get that off here so we can see it. So if we push lower here, we're going to have a potential bullish Gartley pattern, not as deep as the one we saw on pound yen, but still one regardless. But this could be used as a regular Gartley pattern, but this can also be used as an entry into a bigger potential trade as well. Throughout the week, we've been looking at this type of, we'll go to four hour, make it a little easier 
seen. We've been looking at this sort of consolidation here on the Euro Aussie, and we've been waiting for a pop to the upside. You can see we got a little, we got a couple false pops, right? We got a pop right here, and we came back down into our range. We tried to break out again. We held, came back down into our range. If you're still looking for that big bullish pop, and if you zoom out, because there is, uh, you'll see that there is room to the upside. I may have to go to a daily. Let's head to a one day. You see our next VS1 level is going to be higher, right? We're trading about right here. We have a VS1 level here and a VS1 level there. So there is room to the upside. If you're someone that's looking to position yourself in advance of that breakout, you can see that this bullish Gartley will get you into the mid lower part of that range. And that could be an opportunity for you to do a few things. One, you can simply use this position as your potential breakout position. Two, you can use this position as trading the Gartley, but leaving on, instead of taking full targets off on the Gartley one and two, maybe take partial targets off based on the Gartley and then leave a position open for that potential break. Again, only leave it on if you are someone that is actually looking to trade the breakout. If you are just a pattern trader and you're not supposed to be trading breakouts, do not trade this, follow your rules, do what you're supposed to do. Don't get greedy uh, because there is a cost that can come with that. The next pair on our pattern train is going to be the pound Aussie. Now, the pound Aussie already has a pattern in progress right now, so we're not worried about this, but a good opportunity to show you again, there are a ton of these things out there. You can see one completing right now. But if we push lower, I'll hit Enigma again, we're going to have another pattern formation. It's going to be a bull cipher. So you can see X to A, A to B. B to C, if we push lower down to the 184.07 level, right above that 184 even handle, we're gonna have a potential bullish cipher pattern looking for a buy back up across the range. Finally, taking a break from pattern trades, we're gonna take a look at the pound candidate here for a good old fashioned structured trade, right? You can see a high momentum candle. Um, the falling knife coming right back down into a previous level of structure. I've spoken about fallen knives in the past. And again, as a counter trend trader, a lot of people clowned me and made fun of me early on in my career saying, Akil, you can't catch the falling knife. Don't you see that big red candle? There's no way you can look to buy. And I've made a career off of doing exactly that, looking when to buy, right? You got to be smart, right? Don't get me wrong. You don't just randomly close your eyes and push the buy button. But those high momentum candles shouldn't be something that you fear. And the reason is this, right? Think about the psychology of the market. And, and I read a good quote the other day. I think it was from Denise Scholl, who is one of my favorite people in the world to talk about trading psychology because she takes a little bit of a, a, a different approach. Um, by the way, Wendy Rhodes, I don't know if I should say this or not, Wendy Rhodes in billions, right, is based off of her. But if you asked him, not really her, there's a whole law battle going on. But anyway, what I like about Denise Scholl is um, she talks about emotions and understanding emotions. And I truly believe, I read something by her about the better you understand yourself, the better you understand your market. Uh, because as you know, us as traders and the emotions that we give into, other traders out there are giving into the same thing. And the market is nothing more than all of the motion, all, well, all of the actions of the traders in the market. So when I look at the candles, right, it's going to sound a little bit weird. I look at the candles as being kind of like people and actions and, and, and what are they thinking? And you think about this red candle right here. These are sellers, obviously, right? Selling pressure is pushing down. So there's a lot of sellers interested in this, this level for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. And there's a massive amount of fear in someone looking to buy down here. But the question that we want to ask ourselves is, should there really be a massive amount of fear here? Because think about it like this. If this is the popular level, popular level to sell, where are the most sellers interested in, right? Are they interested in the beginning parts of this candle or the ending parts of this candle, right? Think of an item in your store that goes on sale, right? If something goes on sale for um, a cheaper price, right? more people are gonna be interested in buying, right? Now, as that price goes up, right, as the supply for that thing goes down and the price goes up because there's still a demand and you know they can boost the price, whatever like that, the price is gonna get higher. As the price for an item gets higher, are there gonna be more or less people interested in it, right? There's gonna be less people interested because it's more expensive. So this is the same thing. There's gonna be more sellers interested in the beginning of this candle versus the end. And at the end, not, not only are there going to be less sellers interested, but 
there's going to be more buyers interested because now it's a cheaper price for the buyers. There's also going to be less, you know, the sellers that are already in it are going to become buyers because now they're looking to take profit. They're seeing this big old green box or VS1 level and saying, hey, this is a previous level of structure support. I probably want to take a little bit of profit out, right? So you have this shift from selling pressure to buying pressure, right? So if you're someone that's looking to buy and catch a little rebound, this is not a bad area to look for right here. And you can see as we end the day, we're putting in a doji candle, which is a sign of indecision. So if we go down one more time frame to our hourly, right, we'll get a better look at what's going on here. Again, it is the end of the week, so I don't expect any type of significant candlestick or anything like that. Let me get my VS1s off of here. But if we do get a nice hole to end the week, if we do get some type of rejection candle, it should not surprise at all to see a little bit of relief back up. And as counter trend traders, that's what we're looking for. Again, the misconception out there, and this is why counter trend trading gets a bad rap, is that people think counter trend traders are, are buying something here and they're looking to trade a big reversal all the way up to the moon. Like, no, right? We're not looking to get full off of this meal we'll take we're looking to get little crumbs right imagine the old kind of hand in the cookie jar type thing right we're not putting our hand in there and trying to grab as many cookies as possible because that's how you get caught that's how mama gets you and slaps your wrist right we're trying to wait till mom leaves the room put our hand in grab a little crumb get out and boom and just do that over and over and over again <laughs> it's funny i'm looking at the we got a bird feeder outside my window right now not to get too off track, but um, I'm watching this squirrel and he does the same thing, right? This squirrel just, he hops on the bird feeder, he nibbles and steals food. And I look at him, give this look, he runs away, but he only runs to like the very close bush. And then as soon as I turn around again, he's right back on that bird feeder because he knows what it is. He's not sitting there feasting. He's there, he sees a threat, he runs away, then he comes back. And he does that every single day, eating all my darn food. Um, sorry, not, not bitter. Anyway, let's go to the next pair. Nice structure-based trade here on Pound Canada. We're heading to the Dow Jones right here. Two potential pattern formations on the Dow Jones. We have a, a, a continuation trade too. So three things we want to look at here on the Dow. Let's draw out the patterns real quick for you. We'll start with, let's start with the bigger one, a potential cipher pattern here, right? This is going to be our starting point. X to A, swing high to swing low. A to B, our first retracement. B to C with some very nice holds down here. And if we push up to our 786, that is gonna be our CD completion for a bearish cipher pattern. So that's a selling opportunity. Again, the range is gonna go from our 786 all the way to our highs right here. Inside that move of the cipher, we have a potential, get down there, Gartley pattern setting up. Check your data, because this is a shallow one, potential shallow one, but our X to A will be like this. Our B to C will be will be this move right here. Sorry, our X to A will be here. Our A to B will this, be this move right here. Our B to C is our push down. And our CD completion is right at market, right at the 786 for a sell with the completion zone being in here. And if you're someone that's not a pattern trader, right? If you go down to four hour... Uh, four hour or hourly, depending on either one. I'm going to erase this stuff just to not get too confusing but there is a continuation opportunity here as well you can see our little structure shelf right here which has been violated our next key level of structure is going to be up here if we do get some sort of retracement here on the dow we can look for a move back up to this level right here for a nice little bullish continuation opportunity and again speaking of videos that i put on youtube watch them but we did one the other day, talking about analysis paralysis, and it dealt with a very similar situation to this where, you know, so many traders get into trouble because they look at a chart and, hey, a kill just told me there's a cipher and a kill just told me there's a Gartley and a kill just told me there's a trend continuation trade. Which one, one, which one do I do? So if you find yourself as a trader, as someone that gets kind of stuck in that rut of like you're seeing so many things that you don't know which to take action on, make sure you watch that video. I think it's called How to not get analysis paralysis. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very clever with it, but just check the videos from this week on the YouTube channel um, and you'll see it and for some helpful hints and tips so you don't get caught in that situation. Next up, we're going to be on gold. It's funny you mentioned gold, right? I was, I was actually checking out this chart because um, I made a physical gold investment years ago, decades ago by this point, I think. Um, 
And I don't really pay attention to it because I don't need to. It's a longer term investment or whatever like that. But I was curious where it was at because we had a whole conversation in the live room about people doing stuff and then saying that you shouldn't do it. And then later being like, oh, man, you're so smart for doing it. It's like, well, that's not what you said in the beginning. And like this, this is how people are. But we do have a nice potential breakout pattern setting up here. This is going to be called a bullish pennant pattern. You can see our flagpole is going to be that directional move up and then we get into a consolidation and it is a consolidation that is um, condensing meaning that the range is getting smaller you can see that the largest part of the range is from our first retracement right here and then we continue to make a pattern of lower highs higher lows right eventually this will break out one way or another now i would tell you that traditionally this type of pattern breaks out to the upside but that doesn't mean that this particular case will break out to the upside right trading coach podcast listeners if you remember we just had the conversation about probabilities and strategies and and numbers and whatever like that and remember that the biggest thing we emphasized was that hey probabilities odds and all that stuff are edge right it works in our favor but it only works in our favor in the big picture, meaning that on an individual basis, we have no idea what the hell's gonna happen. But bigger picture, we can very accurately make predictions. So again, this situation, I don't know what it's gonna do. We're at a level of structure, so it's not like we're at a we're in no man's land. If we zoom out to the daily here, you'll see that we are right at a previous level of structure, which is something I don't personally like when it comes to breakout patterns. So I think the, uh, here's how I would approach it. I would wait for the confirmed break. So instead of trying to be aggressive and position yourself down here for a bullish break or position your up, yourself up here for a bearish break, I would wait for the confirmed break, meaning the violation of the trend line or the horizontal level of support and resistance. And then after you get that confirmation, look for that secondary chance to get involved, right? It may break out and leave without you. Yeah, that's the, the price you pay for being conservative, but you'll also avoid any type of false signal. And most traders are more concerned with capital preservation than catching every single move. Now, before you move on to your next video, make sure you take a second to hit that like button, subscribe if you're brand new, daily videos here on the YouTube channel. As mentioned earlier, also make sure you check out the Trading Coach Podcast, ranked number seven in top trading podcasts out there in 2023. And also give me a follow on social media at Akil Stokes RTM. I do not bite. I love talking to new traders. So if you have something that's on your mind, if you have any questions, or if you just want to talk charts because that's what i love to do feel free to hit me up at akil stokes rtm just watch out for the scams all right until next time plan your trade trade your plan hope you guys enjoy your weekend